people being appointed in terms of who they know as opposed to what they know, and you got a mess. So what does South Africa have to do? We have to do some, some, some major critical rethinking, but it cannot just simply be of the, of the defense force and, and the intelligence apparatus. Sub-Saharan Africa is experiencing a growth in radical Islamic insurgencies and terrorist movements. What is driving this and what can be done to push back against this trend? Well, I sat down with Professor Hussein Solomon of the University of the Free States Political Science Department to discuss this topic on my podcast, Solutions with David Ansara. If you enjoyed this conversation, please do follow the link in the description below to the full interview with Professor Solomon. Enjoy. You mentioned some of the uh, insurgencies uh, in Africa and some of the problems uh, of uh, radical Islam in sub-Saharan Africa in the beginning of our conversation. And uh, just on South Africa's doorstep is the conflict in Mozambique, uh, in Cabo Delgado. And, uh, you know, that has, has played out uh, rather dramatically and I think shown the, uh, the fragility of many African countries and the ability to, to counter some of these threats uh, militarily. Uh, and I know in some of your research and your writing that you that you've dealt with this quite extensively. Uh, what do you think is the best way to to kind of push back against uh, this this emerging phenomenon that we see in sub-Saharan Africa? I've been researching the issue of terrorism in Africa since 1998, and you know whether you talk about Al Shabaab, Boko Haram. Uh, uh, the various uh, Al Qaeda and Islamic State franchises operating, or indeed what's happening in terms of uh, uh, Cabo Delgado, uh, it's largely local factors being used. Um, it, it is local grievances, uh, an uncaring state, uh, uh, and 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 this results in in people with legitimate grievances uh, utilizing. Uh, ethnic formations, uh, linguistic formation, other cultural formations, with Islam as as an, uh, as a counter narrative of that of the state, mobilizing and then and then getting assistance from uh, from like minded groups. So first and foremost, the insurgency starts locally, and that's where it needs to end. But in terms of uh, and and the Cabo Delgado insurgency uh, had its origins way back in the early 2000s with the first paramilitary formations, uh, uh, paramilitary training camps in that region from at least 2002. Um, and nothing was done. Uh, so in the immediate short term, SADC has, has spoken about a, a deployment of 3,000 force, a 3,000 strong force. Uh, we don't know about command and control. We don't know about funding. We don't know about the issue of interoperability between the SADC force and the Mozambican troops. The Mozambican troops, by the way, uh, uh, are, are hugely disliked by the local community because of the atrocities committed uh, by them in that region. Um, they are, in fact, regarded as an occupying force and so forth. Um, coming from the south, coming from a different ethnic group and so forth. Enjoying this analysis? Click here to sign up for our 30-day free trial for more content from the CIA. Uh, so all of these things have to be done. You need to focus on negative peace and ending that insurgency. But in a medium to long term, you need to talk about economic development in that region. You need to talk about uh, some sort of political accommodation. You need to deal with the, the poor governance of Limo. You need to do uh, something about the drug trafficking, the rhino poaching, which is all exploited. And by the way, you need to deal with the corruption inside the uh, state security apparatus of Mozambique. So you had people miraculously being captured and then, and then um, uh, uh, escaping literally walking out of high security prisons. Um, I've, I've been in contact with a number of journalists in Mozambique and people know who the financiers of the terrorism is. They live in a very nice lifestyle in terms of Maputo, but because they also have a relationship with certain elements of the Mozambican state, they're left alone. Uh, you, you, you know, the issue of terrorist financing has to be dealt with and the corrupt elements in terms of Fulimo has to be dealt with. 
if journalists know way about this, I don't understand why this insurgency is still going on. Talking about SADC, you know, uh, I mean, I mean, we've allowed these problems to fester, including in terms of South Africa. We've allowed these problems to fester, and um, indeed, the the uh, as you heard at the Zondo Commission, the politicization of our uh, security apparatus uh, uh, puts us at risk. If we go there, there is uh, there is ISIS supporters. There are people who are military trained South Africans in Raqqa. Uh, when when it was still the, the the Islamic State capital, they are here. Are they being monitored? Will they be blowback for our intervention in terms of Mozambique? All of these kinds of questions are being asked. And I'm sorry, but you know, um, uh, one of my big heroes is uh, uh, Francis Fukuyama, and I'm referring to his book, The Origins of Political Order. You, you know, and I subscribe to the gov uh, to to the pothole theory of governance. If, if you can't fix potholes, if you can't change traffic lights, if you can't pick up garbage, you're not going to deal with a COVID-19 infection, and you're definitely not going to engage in a successful counterinsurgency operation. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but I'm quite pessimistic about Africa's and South Africa's prospects in terms of dealing with the issue of terrorism. So what ought South Africa to do? Because when Kenya intervened in Somalia, that triggered the attacks at the Westgate Mall, for example. Uh, what do you think is the appropriate response that South Africa specifically should take, excluding the, the kind of multilateral SADC approach? The Kenyan example is a problematic example because, as you know, at the time of independence, the uh, British uh, gave a large chunk of Somalia, Somali in, in inhabited areas, to the new state of Kenya. And that caused uh, uh, problems. And when the Kenyan Defense Force intervened, even the Mogadishu, the success of Mogadishu governments, had problems with Kenya because they were trying to create a buffer zone for themselves uh, in terms of Jubaland. So instead of assisting with strengthening Mogadishu, they were actually uh, trying to strengthen themselves, although being nominally part of Amisom. Uh, in, in, in terms of South Africa, um, you know, David, <laughs> uh, it's a mess and there's no good solutions. Our security apparatus is lousy. Uh, the state of our defense force is lousy. Um, the, the, the kind of, of, of force that we have is not mobile enough. Uh, equipment is breaking down. Read some some of the material coming out of the parliamentary defense, uh, parliamentary portfolio committee on defense. It's really shocking. Um, and 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 here's the thing that that people don't want to really talk about South Africa or any other African state. And let me uh, say this openly. I was looking at what. Eben Barlow, who was running uh, a company called Step at the time, he is no longer involved with them, did in terms of Nigeria. You know, uh, one, 100 men between the ages of 51 and 61, all of them uh, veterans of South African uh, uh, border wars, went into northern Nigeria and did something what 40,000 Nigerian troops could not do. Now, I mean, Nigeria is a, a major superpower on the African continent, you know, and they beat Boko Haram in every offensive, kicking them out of 40 towns in, in, in terms of in the space of two months and actually created the conditions for elections. How did they do it? Simply by bringing their own trackers in, okay? Um, uh, uh, identifying the, the kind of uh, uh, equipment they were, they were carrying, sending in, a, helico a helicopter gunship ahead of the insurgents, giving them a kill zone on, 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 on either side and dropping uh, a force, a strike force in front of them. And they beat them. Uh, this is not rocket science, uh, but you got the wrong people, uh, people who, who shouldn't be in senior positions of power, being in positions of power at every level of the security apparatus, people who have not being in the trenches, uh, commanding troops, people being appointed in terms of who they know as opposed to what they know, and you got a mess. So what does South Africa have to do? We have to do some, some, some major critical rethinking, but it cannot just simply be of the, of the defense force and, and the intelligence apparatus. It, we need a complete overhaul of government, but frankly, I don't see this happening. 
And fortunately, South Africa for a long time has been relatively insulated uh, from this problem of, of, of Islamic terrorism. But I think uh, your, your words, I think, suggest that we should be taking this much more seriously. Thanks for watching this extract from Solutions with David Ansara. If you enjoyed this conversation, why don't you check out the full interview? We've linked to that over here. And I'd also appreciate you subscribing to my other channel. You can do so by clicking here. That's it from me, David Ansara. Until next time, take care.